हरि ओम हरि ओम सो आई कट इन साइड इन टाइम दिस टाइम आई म्यूटेड एवरीबॉडी सो विल डू एज यूजुअल प्लीज टर्न योर कैमरा ऑफ एंड इफ यू वांट टू टॉक यू बोथ टर्न द कैमरा एंड द माइक्रोफोन ऑन एंड व्हेन यू हैव फिनिश्ड टर्न इट ऑफ अगेन like this when the camera is turned off we take less information and the internet is weak because everybody is on the internet <laughs> and when the camera at uh, the microphone is turned off it doesn't interfere so anybody who would like to start the satsang to so dare to be the first please come in <clears throat> Good afternoon, Dana. Hello, Udi. <laughs> How are you? I'm okay. I hope that everything is okay down there. And I would Everything? like to start. I would like to start with a question. Yes. Uh, I'm belonging to a group, to a sangha that is uh, sitting every week and uh, learn together. and i would like to hear your whole thought about the importance of the sangha of a group of people uh, on the pathway the, the mm. self pathway of the individual what the importance of the group if at all mm. especially if you live in a environment that there is a lot happening that has the tendency to pull your attention away from the essence from yourself it's certainly very helpful if there is a sangam if you have a group of people you can come together with the intention to connect it is not absolutely necessary and some people like it more and some people like it less there are people they cannot handle groups so it doesn't work for them but if you feel comfortable to come together in groups especially in the usual western style world it is certainly helpful to come together because then the energy of a group is more than just the sum of the energy that everybody brings it's like something special is happening like the grace is descending on the group if the whole group comes together and sincerely talks about spiritual matters or sits quietly for meditation so it's not absolutely necessary but it certainly helpful and if you have such a group by all means continue if you feel comfortable in it but are you see any uh significant for people who are going together in the pathway uh, of searching mm -hmm. well the significance is simply that you encourage each other that you inspire each other finally it's each own journey 
whether you are alone or whether you are in a Sangha, whether you are in a spiritual community and live only for that, or whether you are totally alone in a society where very few people can relate to what you are doing, it is always at the end each one's own individual journey. But if you come together, you can support each other, you can inspire each other. If you have downs in between, it's helpful if you can talk to people who think similar, then they can listen to you, they can encourage you, and it helps to not lose the courage to go on. Yeah. Hmm. It's not a must. It's not that you have to be in Sangha. It, as I said, ultimately, it's each one's journey with the self, each one's journey with reality, each one's journey with God. Thank you. Are you? Is there anybody else who would like to come in? I've recently been talking repeatedly about the worldwide awakening. And I want to clarify one point there. It's not that now all around the world everybody is going to be enlightened, <laughs> whatever that is. But there is a hunger for something more than just the material level. And especially in the younger generations, there are many people, they are not more satisfied just with the ideal of growing up, then having a career, making much money, having a family, having a lot of possessions, and think that's the sense of life. But there is a longing for something more. It doesn't mean now everybody is going to really sincerely search for total liberation. There will, there will be always the few who are sincerely doing that, sincerely going for that. But the general consciousness is ready to open up. To open up to include also subtle realms, subtle realities, becoming aware that this material world is not as real as it is, that this, is, that this life we have here is a chance, that we can collect experiences, and we can learn to do that playfully, joyously, and need not have all these kind of goals in our mind that make us always miserable because most of the time those goals are not realized and even if they are realized then people first think oh i'm so happy but after some time they become aware but actually it's still the same story it doesn't bring lasting happiness whatever goal in this world on this material level we are achieving And the world is ready for more. And if subtler realms, subtler perceptions are included, then automatically people start to feel more connected. And if that feeling of more connectedness is there, there is the possibility that people learn more to live in peace together. I mean, look at the world. How much of our energy, how much of our resources are being channeled in to build up destructive organizations? 
it's sheer madness. And if people start to become aware how connected we all are, that we are all in the same boat, then maybe with general cooperation, the society could change a lot. And the resources there are, they could be used for really developing a life that is including everyone for the common, that the motivation is that what we are achieving new developments, new scientific developments, they can be used for the general good. We could live so much happier in this world. And there is a possibility that we are going in this direction. And each one who learns to tune into that, who learns to bring the attention to the now, to live in the present, and to connect with that basic energy, with that basic consciousness, with that basic love, is contributing that worldwide it is more and more possible to live in peace. Is there anybody there who would like to say something? Satsang means to connect, connect with Sat, with truth, with the essence. And of course, it's a perfectly good Satsang <laughs> simply to sit quiet and connect. But when there are doubts in the mind, it makes also sense to talk about it. And especially here on this online, it makes sense that we are talking with each other. Where hello. <laughs> hello, Maya. Hi. Yes, hello, Maya. It's Maya? No. Um, no, it's Andrea. Who, who is here? Andrea. Oh, Can yes. You hear me? Okay, yeah. I see you. Yes, sometimes you were all dark, yet now you are in the light. Okay. <laughs> um, I have a doubt, but I'm, I'm not sure if I can explain it clearly or if even it makes sense, but I will try. Um, sometimes when you speak about um, turning towards the source, turning the attention towards the source, or from yeah. other teachers I have heard, and I do this turn, I feel like um, like something like this happens, like it's a, a very open space and almost a dissolution, one could say. But other times, um, because I was listening to a YouTube video of, of David Bodman and he speaks about focusing and it feels almost like the turn is more to go directly inside. And I feel it's more of a gathering of attention. So yes. I'm actually not sure if we're sort of expanding everything or if we're gathering. I don't know if, yeah. if this makes sense. Yeah, it does make sense. <laughs> it's usually looked at it's helpful as a reference point if you have a point to focus onto. But that doesn't mean you have to make your consciousness small that you uh, limited to that point. It simply means that there you have a center that gives you a stability and if you lose the contact it's helpful if you have a point in your body you can focus on and then just relax and you connect again. But that doesn't mean you should only concentrate on that point and then try to be a small as you can in that point. But you can, when you connect, when you feel you're in the flow, you're connected with that, with that divinity, then you can let your attention expand into infinity as much as it goes. The two are not 
opposites. It's not either or, but you can focus, center, and at the same time, let the experience of that be expansive, as expansive as it wants to be, as it can be. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, yes. Kamiko, um, yes. Andrea, can you please, Andrea, can you please shut off oh, your yeah. microphone? I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, hi. Kamiko. Ah, oh, hello. Hello. Um, I have a question that's been there uh, for a while. I don't know, or I also don't know if I can express it. Um, we can only. always try. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Um, it's something uh, I experience in movement meditation or just dance that uh, a bit like go into deep uh, stays. And then almost trans but maybe before that then i always get some i call it downloading um some some realization or understanding and sometimes in the sleep before um awake i'm still sleeping but yeah there's also this downloading things happen that answer my question. Maybe something yeah. I've been thinking during the day or something that's in, on my mind. And when I'm more focused before I sleep and I, I have, a, yeah, I get lots of answer or downloading. So I'm wondering, these um, downloading is, is something I can, um, yeah, where does it come from? Is it I can something I can um, not trust, you know, but how do I see these things? Yeah. Yeah. It can come from different places. It can come out from your subconscious because deep down you know all the answers. <laughs> Everybody knows all the answers. And so it's possible that it comes from your subconscious. But it can also come from subtler realms. We all are connected with a lot of beings and each one have, has a whole interest of subtle beings that are especially connected to you when you are on your world journey and sometimes someone from there may connect with you and give you the information they know is in your mind mm. you need not take every everything that comes like this as god's own final truth but if such a realization, such an answer comes like this, and you feel, yes, yes, it's right. It makes totally sense in the context. Then at least for that time, for that situation, you can, can accept it as a good guidance that is coming from a part you not always having consciously access. Mm. Does that answer your question? And I cannot say mm -hmm. it's coming just from this or that because it can come from different spaces. Hmm. Yes, I was wondering if it's just my mind creates that, but sometimes it's 
So for example, normally I can't answer the question and it's something I cannot just think about it and then solve the problem. I feel it's something, you know, uh, help me to realize or, yeah. So I wonder how should I work with it? How should I, yeah. Mm. You, you can it. accept it. You can accept it as a, mm -hmm. as a positive input still. Uh, then you have mm -hmm. all the right to decide whether mm -hmm. you want to follow that direction mm -hmm. or not. And then listen to your heart. And if it feels totally right, then follow it. And if you have your doubt about it, then you can also not uh, have the right not to take it as God's own advice. <laughs> Thank you. From moment to moment, mm. we have to make little decisions. Mm. And sometimes the decision happens all by itself, comes uh, all naturally spontaneous and sometimes it doesn't come so easy and then if you get an input then if you feel you have a strong resonance in your heart mm. that yes that is right then you follow it it doesn't mean if you follow it after that you are never getting into troubles <laughs> mm. sometimes it's meant that we get into troubles into difficult situations to learn our lessons <laughs> Thank you. Where are you, Chemical? I'm in Nepal. I, uh -huh. I, I came for the visa run from Tiro. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, now I'm here still. I was Wait. too late to come back. Yeah. Waiting until you can travel again. Yes. Okay, wish you a good time up there. Thank you. You too. Thank you, thank you. Are you anybody else would like to come in? May I ask you another question, uh, Werner? Uh, I, would I would like to ask about different qualities of attention. From time to time, I had the feeling that uh, I'm grading my attention toward myself or toward the people around me or to event around me as good or bad, uh, more accurate or like wandering. Is there any meaning for looking on attention as something that is on a scale of event or a scale of things? Attention is simply that capacity that we focus consciousness, that we direct consciousness on something. And most of the time, our attention is simply wandering unconsciously all over the place. <laughs> one moment it's here, one moment it's there, it's always jumping, and then it's divided, some, some goes here, some goes there. <clears throat> there are not different types of attention, but the more you are conscious, where you focus, then you can, the more the attention is simply flowing to that object of focus. It, it can be so-called outside or inside. It can be towards an object or a person or a thought or an emotion or a body sensation. But it's, it's not that these are different types of attention. It's simply that our 
way of focusing consciousness on something in particular. We have that capacity, but most of the time that capacity is com going completely wild because for one moment it goes this direction, one moment it goes that direction, and we are not even aware how we are just pouring out that energy in all directions instead of learning to be consciously conscious now, consciously alive now. The more we are capable of focusing the attention into that timelessness of the now, the more your life simply starts to become fulfilling. Because then the joyousness of existence is being touched more and more. And you, you can become aware of it in all you are doing. So it's not different types of attention that have different, different meanings. It's our attention is stronger or less strong how, how we are focusing. It, it looks sometimes like uh, I'm uh, dancing or singing as a duet with somebody yeah. else, but I find myself uh, having this conversation with myself. Like uh, this is a duet of the, the one only. Yes. Right. There are no two Udis there. <laughs> There's only only one self. But in the mind we can create that. that uh, uh, different aspects of our complexity as if they were different personalities. We can do that playfully, no harm, but then uh, some, sometimes in certain people it's crystallizing so strongly then it becomes somewhat a sick <laughs> thing that the uh, different personalities are there. But it's an illusion. There are no different personalities. It's just that we can create in our mind different aspects. And if you have the habit of sometimes dealing with a thing that is in your mind and you try to figure out something, then it can happen that is like you are uh, questioning and answering to yourself. As long as you are conscious that you are doing that as a game in order to go deeper, no problem. <laughs> So can we say also that the other is also, the other one is also a creation of our mind? Yes, sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> you, you. Anybody would like to come? Hello, Werner. Ah, hello. Hi. Um, can you explain it again? The other is the creation of my own mind. Um, how to understand that? The other's creation of your own the, mind. Oh, the, uh, it, the other, you just it? said, the other is the creation of, of my own mind. Yeah. The other. Uh, it depends whether you mean the other that you're producing like in your mind and then talking to yourself in different parts. But no, I mean other people. Other people, right. Of course, in each one there is that own uniqueness and they are all that same divinity. But the person that we are seeing most of the time it's very much what we are creating after it goes through the filters of my, our mind. We, we see people, how they behave, how they move, see the, their actions, the fruit of their actions, unconsciously or unconsciously, we form pictures and then create a personality that is mostly our own creation. And then or the person goes away and then comes back and instead of being again open and fresh, then it's already the old picture is there that we have created and we already may be full of suspicions and full of 
uh, okay, danger, danger, <laughs> be careful. So that doesn't mean that being is our mental creation. That being is as, as real a divine being as you are, as I am, as everybody is. But what we make out of it is very much our own creation. Okay, and um, something else I wanted to ask or say is about the reason why one starts the spiritual search. For me, it's uh, because I had the strong feeling I want to be free. Yes. And yeah, then later I started meditating and doing therapy, all kind of stuff. And it, it was freeing in a way. It was waking up to the truth that the life I've lived was mainly the life I have been programmed to live. To live. Yes, yes. And, and now I, I, I do the meditation, I do the breast watching and everything. Uh, I listen a lot also to your satsangs. And, but it's, it's like, I, I see that um, it, it never changed really much my life. Yeah, this kind of suffering is the same. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, then I wonder, then I think it's, it's still the, the impulse why I keep on searching or, or, or putting my attention to to the silence and so it's because I want to peace, I want to be free, I want to not follow my uh, programs, you know. Yes. But it doesn't work, I mean sometimes, but mostly not. Mm. And so it, it also means if somebody awakes, uh, it, it doesn't change really the, the life. I mean, you said something before, it, it gets more fulfilling and so, but I don't see that as well. Uh -huh. yeah. Maybe lately it's, it's, it's even, how to say, more difficult because of the situation and this craziness. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because it's really, for me, it's really crazy. The whole world is going nuts. I mean, <laughs> yes. and the people behave like they are walking on the street as if nothing really happening and putting on their masks everywhere and it's it's too much also <laughs> <laughs> well let's come to the original <laughs> not to the people out there but no. <laughs> Right, when you are in, on the way and you start to watch yourself, what is usually happening, of course, each one's story is different and unique, but what is usually happening in the beginning, one feels quite quickly, ah, this is good, something is happening. Really, my life starts to make more sense. And then this feeling may slowly disappear and it becomes commonplace and then you can go through periods, you go on and on and feel nothing is happening. But when you are in the midst of it, you cannot really judge that so clearly. It still subtly may keep on changing, keep on opening up, but it's such a gentle and subtle process that they are not even not really aware of what is happening. And then we, of course, we would like that uh, once we are on the way, that our experience would sort of like go up in a nice curve like this. <laughs> and it it doesn't quite function like that. And uh, life usually goes like this. <laughs> Then you have your periods, you feel, oh, really, something is happening, I'm getting ahead, and really, it's getting more fulfilled, and then, boom, <laughs> something else happens, and 
the tendency is there to fall again into blackness and uh, sometimes despair and think, oh, I'm not getting anywhere. But if you could, from a bit a distance, watch that line, that up and down and make an average, still you would see it, it's a line like this. But when you're in the midst of it, especially when it's rather in a downward curve, then it doesn't look like that. But invariably, I can assure you, all your attempts to watch, to breathe, <laughs> to, to be in the present, to, to watch your reactions, they are not wasted. They accumulate something very precious that becomes stronger and stronger. And sometimes it's manifesting a bit, sometimes it's not really obviously manifesting, but it's still there. It still happens. So don't get disheartened if you sometimes feel, well, I cannot see any, any progress, I cannot see any effect. But sometimes it's just very little things from where you can get clues that, after all, it's still somehow changing. That when you're in situations and you suddenly become aware, ah, two years ago I would have totally exploded there, I would have reacted, and they, here it doesn't happen. It seems like it's nothing compared with all the time we put in, with all the effort we put in, all these little changes seem like nothing, but they are indicated that somehow deep down something is changing. And most of us, we have quite a package there of which we are not aware that we are carrying it along. And gradually, this is changing, this is getting lighter and lighter. But if you continue, there will come the moment where you really start to feel, ah, oh, you shed a lot of weight and it's worth the trouble. So don't give up if in between you feel like it doesn't lead anywhere. It does. After all, you're here. <laughs> you're here and now. And it's still a different situation than before when you start. Right now, of course, it's a bit a uh, funny situation, especially because people are so emotional about it all over the world, and the whole human emotional sphere is really packed <laughs> with intense emotions, and it's so easy to get sucked into that. So when you... <laughs> When you look around and think the whole world is nuts, then never mind, think that everybody is nuts, ourselves included. <laughs> but then just try to observe the emotion instead of wondering, oh, where does it lead? What is going to happen? What's the point in all this? But make use of that intensity of what is happening, of the intensity of the energies, of the intensity of the emotions. Make use of that energy that is caught in it. To use that energy to go that much deeper <laughs> in yourself, in the present. Let the emotions come, but then don't get stuck on the circumstances that brought the emotion about, but simply watch the emotion, how it is manifesting and relax and sometimes then instead of getting agitated and getting despaired or getting uh, carried away into God knows what for fantasies, that very energy of that emotion can really push you deeper into yourself. Now it's the, really the moment that much the more to be alert as good as we can. But at the same time, it's good to keep a playful note in it, not to make it a heavy duty. Okay, I have to be alert now. <laughs> and then see it as another heavy, terrible job we have to do, but more in a playful mood. And when you catch yourself that for quite a good while, you didn't have a conscious moment, don't Reprimand yourself, don't scold yourself, don't uh, lament about it, but just that moment, uh oh, got me again, but here now I am. And relax. 
Don't worry, it's not for nothing. <laughs> not one single drop of effort you made is in vain. Not one single drop of hardship we are going through is in vain. Not one single drop of suffering we go through is in vain. Even if we are not aware of it, subtly it's accumulating something very precious. And sometime, somewhere, everyone will have that realization and look back and think, great, I went through all that. It brought me here, it built up subtly something of which I was not aware, and then you can start to consciously reap the fruit of it. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I wish you well. <laughs> Thanks. How are you? Would anybody else like to talk? Hello, Werner. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello, Werner. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I want to ask you about how to use spiritual plates like Ramana Samadhi, special power spots, what we have around. Uh, for yeah. example, we try to meditate near Ramana Ashram to get more spiritual energy, but there's some disturbance like flights, some noise, and how yeah. to find the balance in between meditation at home alone and meditation with some spiritual spots? Yeah. It depends the individual. If you like to go in these spots, if you feel nourished there, if you feel it's easier, then by all means, right now you cannot go <laughs> to Ramana Shram. <laughs> so you're, you're obliged to stay at home and do it in that place. But if, the, if you have the possibility and you feel attracted, then it is also helping. Of course, it, the, it's usually coming with a whole package. Nothing is only positive. Always there is the other side. Like you mentioned, you go to Ramana Shram, there is that intensity there. But at the same time, there is all that movement, all that noise, and all these things that can distract you. And if you feel too much distracted, then maybe you rather choose a quieter place most of the time. But you can also learn in a spot like this to screen out everything, to tell those factors that are disturbing, you can screen them out and connect with the intensity of the place. But the intensity of the place, of the external place, is basically a reflection from that intensity that you have in yourself. That's why we feel it attracted. If we were, are longing for truth, if we are seekers of truth, then these power spots, they are attractive because they sort of remind us of what is already there in yourself. So if you can easily, be in such a power spot, then by all means. But if you can't, then you can be assured that same power spot is in yourself. And some people, they like to be rather alone and they can meditate in their own room better than when they go to a place like Raman Ashram or any place where there is more movement. But there is no rule about that. Just follow your heart. Don't, don't follow too much the mind and think, oh, I should go here, I should go there, because there I'm getting more. But then it's just a calculation. What we are doing here is not a business. <laughs> it's not that we have to somehow accumulate more that we are getting from somewhere. And if you are not going to a power spot, we are missing the chance. 
what we are busy here is to become aware that all what we are looking for is already here, is already now, is in yourself. And if it helps you, if you get more easily reminded of that in a power spot, then it's very useful to go and seek those power spots and spend at least some time in it and then try maybe again outside of it by, by yourself. But if you can't, it's not a reason to feel sad about it because it is here, it is now, wherever you manifest, wherever you are appearing, it is here, it is now. That power you feel in a power spot is a reflection from your own inner power, from your limitless source of power, of consciousness, of love, of joy, of existence. So follow your heart. When you feel like and it's possible to go to such places, go to such places. But if you rather feel like, like at home, don't disturb that natural uh, sitting quietly in your home by thinking about I should go here, I should go there because I would get more out of it. It should not come from the head, it should come from the heart. Yes, thank you, I understand. Thank you. Are you, are you busy translating into Russian? No, it doesn't work today. We have to organize it with special... Um, uh, some organizement is needed more because WhatsApp can uh, have only four persons in conference. Oh, it's too I little. See, I see. Yeah, yeah. 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 Today, well, no translation. Uh, wish, you, wish you good luck with it. <laughs> okay, we will try. <laughs> are you? Are you? Are you? Hi, Werner. Anybody? Uh, hello. Oh, hello, my friend. <laughs> good, good to see you again, Werner. Look, I always ask kind of funny questions, but this time is serious. Uh, I. Uh, this I is not real. You understand, and everybody probably understands. But if you carry on living and uh, replying to that I, to that little I, that means in the same sense that you are compromising, that you are carrying on with this, uh, you know, uh, mental mm, disease or something that is split all over <laughs> the world. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I, and here I have a dilemma, you know, uh, either to carry on somehow, uh, knowing that it's, uh, um, you know, like mental hospital or something. Either yeah. you have to live with your real eye, which is bloody difficult uh, because when you deal with the people with the ordinary people they they probably think that you are just a you know a madman and uh, they won't understand you at all so what's your take what do you think what is the best solution for that yeah what, what i mean are you still uh, you know recommend to carry on being that personality in, or is it like uh, more mm, like trying to to live honestly, as I would say, uh, from the name of uh, of of nothingness or whatever you say? Mm. Yeah, that's the question. There is not really a real I and a false I, and you cannot say the I is false. Really, <laughs> because you are there to say it. <laughs> that sense of I you are feeling when you are totally identified with the personality, actually it's a reflection. If you bring your attention to the now and don't think, don't think about the past, about the future, there is only the sense of being now. Yeah. And you can call that the I, but it's not I'm, I am like this, I am like that, I'm different than others. It's simply that sense of presence. And that is not false. That is not 
unreal. What is unreal is that identification with the role we are playing. But that doesn't mean you have to stop now behaving as a person in this world, because as long as you are appearing, then somehow or other you have to behave. <laughs> so, something or other you have to do. And even if you start to become a holier and holier and holier person, it's still a role that you are playing. <laughs> Just be aware, it's not what you are. It's just the role that you are playing in the theater of this world. The more you are aware, the less you have a conflict with it. And then you can play your role. And you can play, be interested in it sometimes and sometimes not interested. And you can put effort in it to play it properly and creatively and in a good way, in a joyous way. But at the same time, you are like an actor, always knowing I'm just playing that role. So and your answer is that there is, there is no way uh, to escape from playing the role. Uh, not, no chance to being without role. Not as long as you are part of this theater. <laughs> if you want to stop this role, you have to get out of it. <laughs> but, <laughs> But you can become aware that you are not the role. And then the, the drama still continues, but you can have a lot of fun with it. Sure. Okay. No much said. The suffering, the suffering comes because we are identifying. And then, then I, me, separate from the whole rest of existence, I have my ideas how things should be in order that I can be happy. And then most of the time it just doesn't work out the way I like it. And then I can be miserable all the time. But then if we stop identifying so much, then that equanimity comes. If our plans work out, fine. If they don't work out, also fine. And then it doesn't cause a problem. But as long as you are appearing in a human form, then you are playing a role. Uh, people say sometimes, but be your real self. But right, even if you are authentic and if you are really aware that I'm not simply this person, this person is just the role I'm playing, you're still playing a role. The whole difference is whether you are unconsciously doing that and then suffer help, or whether you are consciously doing it and then you can have a lot of fun with it. Look, but uh, now I deal with my uh, grandson, and he's like almost six years old. And I teach him, uh, but at some point when I tell him that he is he, I feel that it's, something is wrong there. I mean, I'm not telling the whole truth to him. Yes. You understand what I mean? And uh, right. in, in some sense, it's like, like I, I help him to grow his ego, you know. Which is, in yes. one sense, is like inevitable because in this world, otherwise he might not survive very, very, very easily without it. But from the other side, then the time will come and he will have to, you know, to destroy all of it sometimes. Right. So, which is but actually what is the right approach? Yeah, you you can't really avoid it for him, <laughs> and those. <laughs> Those who develop what we would call rather a healthy ego, once they start to reflect, then it's easier to detach from that healthy ego than if somebody is unbalanced, if somebody gets close up insecure. If you help a kid to develop self-confidence, then actually you are not doing any harm to that kid. For some time it may just then become very egotistic about it, but at the same time, with that self-confidence, everything is getting easier to achieve in this world, but also to let go from the 
thing, so to say. So it's still uh, somehow they have to grow up. They come in this world, they have to grow up. If you can somehow teach them to rely on themselves for their strength, then you do a great job. And don't be, uh, don't be in this philosophical thing, but I should make him clear that he is not an ego. He has to figure it out for himself. Okay. Adio. 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 Hello, Werner. Hello. Uh, oh, what's your name again? Sridev. 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 In some um, sad song, I can hear about consciousness and uh, awareness. Is there uh, any difference between consciousness and awareness? No, no. They are exactly the same. There are okay. synonyms. It, okay. It's simply that in certain teachings, they differentiate from consciousness and awareness to the, uh, to point out to the personalized consciousness and calling it consciousness and rather the impersonal consciousness and call it awareness. But this okay. is just uh, in a line of teaching that you accept that you call it like this to make clear what you are talking about. But consciousness is consciousness, awareness is awareness and consciousness is awareness and awareness is consciousness. Okay. There is not a different type of consciousness which is personal and the impersonal consciousness. It's just that a part of that impersonal consciousness may be caught for some time in a personal loop and go round and round there, but it's still the real consciousness. Okay. So for example, when you do yourself inquiry, mm -hmm. you ask, who am I? And you are conscious, and you are conscious of being conscious, then don't unnecessarily uh, start to question in your mind, but is it now the real consciousness or is it a false consciousness? Is it now consciousness or is it awareness? It is, even when it's distorted, it's still the real consciousness. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the consciousness is only the, the field of perception. It is not the self. Consciousness is not the self. You cannot say the consciousness is the self. It's the primordial expression of the self. It's the first expression. It's the ground out of which all is coming. But what is prior to that there is absolutely nothing to say about it. No teaching, no word, nothing will ever be a real pointer for that. So a lot of talk is about consciousness because that's something we can still grasp somehow and aim at. We can aim at pure consciousness. It's not only consciousness, it has two other flavors. It's also energy and it's also love. They are equally transcendental like pure consciousness. Pure energy and pure love and pure consciousness. These three aspects together, they are the first expression of that absolutely incomprehensible something. <laughs> not a thing, but <laughs> that incomprehensibleness, what you are, what the self is. So as long as we are on the search, we can very well focus on consciousness and get subtler and subtler and subtler and come to that pure primordial consciousness, that pure awareness. That's all we can do. We cannot do anything beyond that. All we can do is come back, come back to that ground, to that first expression. As long as we are unconsciously always making the effort of getting distracted from that, we can make an effort to see what we are doing and learn to not do that 
and turn the attention back to the source where it's coming from. That source being the pure consciousness, the first expression. And if you get that, all we can do is be available, be open. There is a mystery there that no teaching can possibly explain. No religion, no spiritual teaching has ever been able to define that which is prior to that pure consciousness. So we can aim at pure consciousness as long as we are from our old pattern, from our old habits always being pulled away from that purity of consciousness or the purity of energy or the purity of love, then we can make an effort, we can make an attempt to catch the attention and turn it 180 degrees and bring it back to the source, to that ground from where everything else is springing up. That's all we can do, but somehow that much we have to do, we have to attempt. And then just be, be open and wait and see what happens. <laughs> Okay. And, and that turn of uh, 180 degrees is a function of the, the mind or it's a function of consciousness? Of course, it's a function of the mind, which is a function in consciousness. It's the mind that creates the problem. And on that level, we catch, we catch the consciousness that is involved in doing that, which we call the mind. <laughs> it's the mind that is creating the problem and that same mind can see, oh, I don't need to go down that alley, I can turn the attention back. This is still a function of the mind and uh, there's nothing wrong with that. That same mind that is creating the trouble can be used to get rid of the trouble. But then that's as far as the mind can go. The mind can see, okay, uh, I'm doing that, I don't want to be there anymore, and turn the attention somehow back to the source, being with the question, who am I? Or being with turning the attention to simply breathing and relaxing, or something. This is still a mental function, but then you can let go and just be. And that's not more a function of the mind. <laughs> the mind is distracting us and the mind is giving the first impulse no it's not quite true the impulse comes from the self but the mind is taking the first action to return the attention and then you can drop the mind <laughs> drop the mental function and just be be here be now and let go okay thank you I may say to the same topic, now the mind is being talked about as something very bad. <laughs> Especially in the modern Advaita teaching, the mind is a bit, has a bit become like the devil. <laughs> it's, it's all the mind, it's that terrible, that terrible mind that it's creating all the troubles. There is not even really such a thing like a mind. <laughs> Where is that mind that everybody is talking about? <clears throat> but there is that capacity in the human state, in the human manifestation, there is that capacity to form consciousness into reasonable thoughts. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. It's not that that is a mistake. It's beautiful. It's the self that wants to express itself creatively, beautifully, joyously. So that is not wrong. What is wrong is that it's not being used as an instrument where it's appropriate and then dropped. But somehow we have gotten into that habit of thinking all the time and defining ourselves with that thinking and defining our reality with that thinking. And that's because everybody says, oh, the mind is bad, the mind is bad, the mind is bad, the mind is not good, the mind is not bad. That capacity to think is a beautiful instrument. Simply, we have to learn 
that become aware how much we are doing that and then learn not to continuously think and think and think and think and think all that unnecessary stuff but use that same capacity to think constructively to be aware how the attention is out of old pattern habits being pulled into stories and things and things and things the same thing over and over and then when becoming aware consciously use the mind consciously use that capacity to direct consciousness to form consciousness into reasonable thoughts by deciding not to go into that deciding to return the attention back to the source that much is a function of the mind and it's perfectly valid and then you just learn to let go and not more be in that thinking thing i said that not only to you but generally there is a misunderstanding that is many in many teachings it's being said because people come to me and said but uh, this teacher says and that teacher said but this is also the mind and it's only from the mind but if we are not in the mind all these questions they are not rising if we are not in the mind then we don't create suffering and if you are don't we if you are not creating suffering we are in harmony with the self and we don't go to satsangs and we don't have to go anywhere but as long as it is there it's nothing wrong to catch the attention on the level of the mind to use that capacity of the mind to turn the attention in the right direction that much mental activity is very creative and helpful we don't have to shy away and even if somebody says but it's still the mind that is doing that yes it's the mind and then you leave the mind behind and also we can consider that the mind is like a sense of perception for example uh, if i have a thought i can uh, turn attention towards uh, the witness of the thought and i, I can do the same with uh, something that i hear or something that i see so right uh, tough are also a good tool to to reveal the the, the witness right sure yes you yeah. can you can direct the attention with that capacity with the mind yeah. and uh, most of the time people do it all the time unconsciously and it's getting scattered all over the place it's getting contradictory it's getting full of tension but if you consciously turn the attention where you want it to then it's a very creative and beautiful process it's nothing wrong The mind is not the devil. <laughs> Identification uh, to the mind is a problem. Yes, but the mind is only a problem if it's totally out of bounds, uncontrollably, uncontrollably, uncontrollably forcing you to go into things all the time that you don't want to go to. If that is happening, then it's good to become aware. What this mind, what this mental function is doing, what's really going on there, and then learn to drop bit by bit until it's getting more manageable. Thank you, Werner. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else would like? Yeah, hi, hello. hello. Can you hear me? Hello. Yes, hello. I can hear you and I can see you. Hello. Hi. Uh, I'm actually asking for a friend who is here with us. I hardly can follow you. I don't know what is wrong asking, with you. I want to ask a question that was asked by my friend. Can you hear? Coucou, ma chère Natalia. Écoute, j'aurais dû écouter mon frère. C'est terrible aujourd'hui. 
Là, je viens d'avoir des douleurs. J'ai le pied en l'air. C'est comme si j'étais au début de la douleur. J'arrive pas. Alors, à... uh, it's somebody else Donc, talking now. C'est le pied en l'air. Là, je suis. J'ai des douleurs, mais vraiment, wow. Donc, uh. euh, ben, je crois qu'il faut plus que je rien faire encore pendant deux, les trois semaines qui me restent. Alors, euh, Donc, va à, je t'en supplie, va à Vuiran. Si tout d'un coup ta maman était revenue aujourd'hui et ta fille profite, parce qu'ils annoncent beaucoup pour la semaine prochaine, que ça who, abîme beaucoup les, les, in les French here? Mais va là-bas, tu iras sans moi chez Liga, j'y okay. pense même pas. Donc si jamais, il ben, n'y a rien qui est urgent, donc tout tranquille. Si toi oui. tu devais retourner pour une chose, mais ben, tu m'appelles. Ok. Somebody was talking into it and disturbing, I mute it all. So, the person who previous, just before that, wanted to talk to me, please turn your microphone on again, and then we can talk. Yeah, hi. Ah, uh, there we are again, yes. <laughs> so, my friend who is uh, with, with us here in the satsang has asked me to ask for her a question. Yes. Regarding the pure of the real self, which is pure energy and pure consciousness, according to what you said before. So she's asking what happens to this self uh, after this? What happens to this self after that? Yes. Right. <clears throat> the self is the self is not born. And is not dying. <laughs> the the personality stops the game of this of this theater in this world. Now, what happens to the consciousness that was manifesting as the personality? Most of the time, it's simply withdrawn into your being, into your real self. But even now, you are not really incarnated it's more like you are projecting an aspect of yourself into this world and then at that so-called death that projection stops and that consciousness is withdrawn back to yourself and there you are richer for the experience it is possible yeah sorry i didn't understand the last um, sentence um, you, you couldn't understand the last sentence, okay? Yes. The, con the that consciousness that is projected into this world yes. and forms this personality, and at the end of the life, uh, when this person so-called dies, this consciousness is simply withdrawn again into your being, mm -hmm. and there you are, richer for the experience. <laughs> okay. Okay. Dying, dying is beautiful. Dying is not something terrible. <laughs> it's maybe the process of dying, if we are afraid, may be terrible for some time. But once you are out of the illusion of being this person, then you, it's beautiful. It's like waking up from a nightmare. <laughs> Okay, now I have my question about what you just said before. Because yes. when you describe it like that, it sounds as if you have died once. <laughs> because it's an experience that, you know, what they say is that only people that have been there can describe. And you describe it as if you are experienced to dying. Everybody is. Every being has projected many times and then deep down there is that knowledge there is nothing dangerous there. <laughs> it's, it's simply somehow when we project into this world along with it that comes all the forgetting of what you are really so th that you're growing up, playing your role, but you can become aware that you are not simply that person that you were thinking all the time. 
And once you, you become aware of that, then your old fear of dying disappears. Because you know, you cannot really die. <laughs> it's just not possible. Simply one drama is over, the curtain swells, the story is over, but you are still there. <laughs> now, if that, if the identification is so totally strong and somebody dies with strong emotions, these emotions may go on for some more time and produce all kinds of funny scenarios until this momentum of these emotions is run out before one is ready to let go for that consciousness consciousness to be withdrawn again into the self, into the being. That can happen. But uh, still, sooner or later, all that baggage that one takes along is falling off. And there is simply that pure being again. So, I would like then to share what has been what I've been experiencing in, in this period now. You know, I just came back from the journey in India with uh, Lila, sat with you there, um, and then fell, you know, into this uh, Corona thing and also the politics here in Israel, which is going crazy. And to make it short, since everything seems so absurd, <laughs> I mean, not the phenomena of, of uh, the sickness, but the reactions and behaviors and everything seems so absurd that I've, I've been so happy <laughs> because of that somehow. Never, in, you know, I've, I've sat in so many retreats and I've been on the path for so many years and I've been with so many doctors and met teachers, and, but nothing has ever been taking me to this um, experience of being so nothing. And also being so much in the present because nothing seems to be real. To be nothing so much, I, I, I didn't present. get the word. To be so much in the present. Ah, oh, yeah. Because nothing seems real. Absolutely nothing seems real for me now. To me. Right. It's a great relief, isn't it? <laughs> I hope. I hope it's, um, I hope, I mean, right now it is a great relief and it has been going on for quite a while. Yeah. It, it is a great relief, actually. I, you know, I, I really feel I want to say, I hope it will stay like that. Right. <clears throat> but even if it should happen that sometimes you lose it, you still yeah. have the memory. That uh, if you connect, if you let go, if you relax, everything becomes simple and easy. And yeah. and and even if you should lose it, then don't don't worry about it. You still have that memory, and that memory helps you not to worry about it, and uh, it will come back. Sometimes, for some people, this comes this experience you're describing and it stays for some time and then it goes again and then they think what did I do wrong why have I lost it and somehow you cannot even say that you did do something wrong if this happens then it just was not your time to simply stay there and there was still on the program some other experience but if that memory is there and if you don't uh, scold you and beat yourself up and think, okay, for somehow, for some reason, the clarity has gone, but still I remember it will make it easier 
not to get so totally involved again into all the games. And then if you don't get involved, it will also easier come back that you, ha, ah, there you are again. Mm. Nothing is real, but it's real as an uh, appearance, momentary. It's just momentary, as a, real as an appearance. But it's not something that we have to hold on to as the reality. It's a magic show where we are playing around, but that which makes the experience possible, that is the source of reality. It's good that the crazy situation in this game has helped you to connect with that easier. And I wish you well that you keep on co being connected. The experience of it will start to unfold and to unfold and get more powerful. Just let it happen. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I wish you well. Adio, adio. I have one more question or two short yeah. ones. Yes. Uh, the one is uh, what is the meaning of Pariom? Pariom. Yeah. It, it's just one traditional Indian way of expressing that which you cannot really express. <laughs> okay. Good. I like that. <laughs> so I. I will use that as my greetings to my neighbor <laughs> when I come in. I will say that it's a nice remembrance also to to speak this out. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't quite get the second. What did uh, you just now say? <laughs> I just said uh, I will use it as a greeting for some people well, whom I meet often. Yeah. So as a statement as a remembrance as something like that uh, where are you i'm in austria yeah i mean maybe uh, you are careful with that because some people may think he, if you are a bit gaga going around saying that. no 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 <laughs> my neighbor my neighbor is used to that sometimes there was a time where i always say Hare krishna and things like that and they oh, like I see. It. Okay, fine, fine. Hurry home is fine then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but don't, don't walk in Austria on the road and say hurry, hurry home to everybody. <laughs> no, I won't. <laughs> I won't do that. <laughs> right. And second question was, I asked you already when I was in India, um, but I forgot what your answer was. And maybe now it's a different one. <laughs> and, it, and it was, uh, what do you suggest as a spiritual reading? Like, because I, I love to read books, spiritual books. And mm. so do you have any suggestions? Well, what do you, you like when you come here? I think you must have some connection with Ramana's teaching or with Advaita. Yeah, also, yes. Yeah, yeah. Right. Sure. Have you read the Yoga Vasishta? No, but I think I have it at home. Maybe, I didn't maybe, read it. Yeah. Maybe you look into it and read it little by little. If it's appealing to you, you read it. If not, then never mind. Yeah, and, and by whom? By whom? Which author? Because there are different interpretations, I guess. Yeah, I I don't know the, all the authors that are there. Whatever whatever yoga vasishta you have, you see whether it's appealing to you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's supposedly the teaching of the Maharishi vasishta that he gave to Rama. Okay. Right. So he he was turning Rama from an ordinary man into a divine incarnation by giving these teachings. And if you have the whole Yoga Vasishta, this is a huge 
book with a lot of stories. But then what is commonly now uh, known is a shortened version of it with the stories that are connected with the Jnana teaching. Mm -hmm. okay. it's, a bit more, it's a bit more juicy than the pure Advaita teaching because everything is put into stories. Yeah, yeah, that's good. But otherwise, just uh, follow what comes, what life brings you. If there, if there is a book and you feel attracted, you can try it. And if you feel after a moment there is a funny feeling and why should I read this, then maybe you don't read. <laughs> and if you, feel if you feel attracted and it helps you mm. to open your heart, if it helps you to open your mind, if it helps you to connect, then that book is good, no matter who wrote it. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Hariom. 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 Anybody else who would like to talk? Maybe you're hearing in the background that sound. <laughs> this is a bunch. Hello. Yeah. Hi. Um, I have another question. Ah, yes. Hello. Yeah. You're welcome. Hi, um, <laughs> thank you. Um, I wanted to ask you when, when we're doing this turn and looking, I always feel there's layers and suddenly what is looking can sort of be seen and you can always go a bit more back. And right. Then finally, I feel it's not possible to go more back and there's this feeling of just being. But other times the question, the, the doubt arises, if it's really the beingness or if it's just some more subtle personality that's sort of pretending to be quiet, you know, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm really sensing what must be sensed or is it just something pretending to be something else or... I don't know if you yeah. have any advice. Right. The tendency is that when you try to observe yourself, that you just go from the subtler perception, uh, from the grosser perception to the subtler perception to more subtle perception, but still the impulse is coming from the real, from the self. So if you keep your alertness, then you are not getting stranded. Just keep alert. Don't think, now I reach. If you think that, you are sure to be wrong. <laughs> then, then you just want, then you're doing what you said. Then you just want to settle down on a, in a subtler personality. Keep that aliveness. Keep that creativity alive. Keep that alertness alive. And just be here now and relax, relax into that. It's not so much a searching intellectually and peeling off. It may happen that of, of course um, it's like something comes up and then you peel it off. But it's not an intellectual work. The intellectual work is already over. You, you understand with your intellect, okay, go that, direct, that direction. And then we can leave the intellect away and you just are experienced. Here, now, I am. I am. And then the intellect may want to come up with explanations or you may experience something, but you keep that alertness and then that also may go away. But if you start to think, oh, that's it, I got there. <laughs> I'm there, you're wrong. <laughs> okay. So it's almost like a rest, but it's dynamic. It's con constantly. It's dynamic. Okay. Something is not moving. There is something in you. It's like a rock. It's like a mountain. <laughs> and everybody, everything is moving. But that moving part is not false. It's also an expression of that reality. It's the unmoving aspect and the moving aspect. 
but you can bring your attention more and more and more back to that solid, unmoving aspect. And then let it play, let it aspect, let it unfold, let it express it. Don't get caught in one expression and think that's the whole truth. Okay. It's actually very easy whenever you think, oh now, that's really it. You can be sure there is not it. <laughs> it's still an expression of it. Yeah. And when you speak of presence and of now, it has nothing to do with this uh, Buddhist idea of mindfulness, right? Because if we were putting the attention of, on what the senses are feeling, it's too external, right? You just mean now, you just mean the being itself? Right. Or should you we practice use... mindfulness as well? Yes, you can. It depends when you are used to do that. You can very well go around, uh, go on with that, that mindfulness. That mindfulness usually is used to just be aware what your senses are feeding you in the present moment. But then don't stop there. Use that as a starting point. And then you can use that mindfulness, not simply what the senses are bringing you, but uh, mindfulness about what thoughts are going on. What is happening in your body, the body sensation. And don't stop there. Uh, just use that mindfulness to become subtler, to become more aware of what, where is it all at all coming? What is making that whole experience possible? <laughs> I mean, the, that mindfulness is right. Simply don't stop on the material level to be in that material present. Because uh, there is not even such a thing like a present on that level. Wherever you put your attention, it's already gone. It's already gone again. <laughs> but there is that present, that sense of present that is timeless and that is aware of all that. that so if you are used to do that Buddhist mindfulness practice, you can very well start out like this, but don't get stuck on this material level. Use that same way of being mindful in subtler and subtler and subtler ways. Okay, thank you very much for, for all your guidance. I hope to, to go to a real life satsang with you soon when the quarantine is finished. I wish you well. I really Continue appreciate like this. Thank you. And if, and if in course of the process, somehow doubts pop up, then maybe we can talk about it again. <laughs> Thanks. Adieu. Last time we went to see Arunachala, nobody is talking now. Let's go and see Arunachala again, because now I find also out how I can turn <laughs> the camera, that it's looking the other way out of the tablet, and then I can see better what you are seeing. Right. So, there we are. Some may know this proof. <laughs> and there we are approaching Arunachala. There he is. <laughs> it's always a nice, wonderful view for those who have seen him. It's just a mountain, <laughs> an old volcano. And yet, since time memorial, great beings have been drawn here because of the particular energy that is there. 
living their intensity, living their life here, benefiting from what is there and enriching with their special life, what is already here. Ramana Maharshi, as a young boy, he was simply attracted like an iron to a magnet and he never left again. Benefiting from that intensity that was there before him, but enriching what has been there before him with his very special life and teaching. Okay, let Arunachala again vanish in the mystery. <laughs> okay. We are on our roof, which many know. I'm going back. Anybody else would like to talk something after this little <laughs> view? Werner. Hello. Oh, there is Werner, you hear me? Yes. Hello. Yes, I hear you. Hi. Hello, Mayo. How are you? <laughs> Quite fine. <laughs> um, I wanted to share. <laughs> uh, I wanted to share with you uh, uh, the sense that I have for the last few months and to hear if you have something to say about it. In, okay. uh, like two months ago, uh, I was waking up from a dream, usual dream, not something special. Yeah. And when I waked up, I noticed the, the one that doesn't move that you talked before. Yeah. It was very clear because in the dreaming and when I waking, waking, there was the same sense of being and then come the question did i wake up it's the dream and what we are calling waking up it's feel exactly this the same seems yeah. things are moving and you feel like there is life and things happens and in the same times there is a sense of being that doesn't move since then, there is always a sense of dreaming. Yeah. I know to come back to the source that doesn't move. It's very clear now. And, uh, and it feels like I'm dreaming all the time. Yeah. Does That's that what I wanted to share. Yeah, the, just the question about that. Does that cause any problems that you feel it's all dreamlike in your daily life because of that? No. No problem, no. huh? It's look like it's it's look like it's always was like this. Just I didn't notice. Yes. <laughs> That's and now correct. I'm noticing it. Yes. <laughs> That's what Great. So it makes everything easier, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because yes. once you perceive this reality, not as total reality, but dreamlike reality, then you stop taking it so damn serious. Mm -hmm. anymore. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And most, most of our problems are exactly because of that. Because we take everything so serious, and especially me, me, my role in the whole game is so serious and important. It's like the center of the universe. <laughs> and if you stop taking that serious anymore, then everything becomes play. Mm -hmm. That's right. 
it's nice that you can experience it like this. It's fine. Don't stop here. But it's what you are experiencing, what you are expressing is is true. The real uh, the world is not as real as it appears. It's not exactly the same like the dream world in the night, but yet it's not that much different. <laughs> The what did you mean to the... yeah what do you mean when you say don't stop here don't think now this is the end of the story and i can settle down the still keep the alertness of being and let okay. the experience of that being unfold and unfold and not think now uh, what you what you have achieved uh, so mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's enough, that's it, and settle down and get stuck there. But uh, you can playfully continue, not think, oh, okay, I have to dig and it's heavy duty again and stuff. <laughs> but, <laughs> but keep that alertness and that openness for your experience to unfold. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Love you, Werner. Anybody would like to talk? Jasmine wants to talk. <laughs> Jasmine, you want to come and say hello? Basically, it's so easy. It's so natural. What we are looking for is not some grand mystery beyond the stars <laughs> up in sky somewhere. to find fulfillment, that sense of fulfillment, all we have to do is to be here now and learn to relax and to be consciously conscious, consciously alive and learn to let go. And here it is in its pristine beauty. <laughs> now, the experience of that, that can unfold and unfold as the time is passing and the more you are in conscious, living, touch with that, the more it will manifest itself that every moment is becoming so full of the joyousness of existence. And this doesn't stop. As the time is passing, the intensity of it will just increase. And you may have all kinds of experiences, and you may have wild experiences beyond the stars, but what you are looking for is not out there somewhere. It's here, it's now, it's that because of which you can breathe. That which makes it possible to simply 
Griffin, brief out. <laughs> it's that because of which you can think, that because of which you can experience anything, taste, smell, touch, see, hear, because of which the emotions are there and they are perceived. The whole game of daily life becomes a playful journey if we don't identify with the little aspects of it, worrying about this, worrying about that, and this should be, and that should be, but just learn to go in the flow, be in the now, in the, not in the present, point in time, but simply in the present, in the timelessness of the now. I know when I'm talking like this, it sounds so easy, and it is easy. Still, our old habits may come again and again and again and create complications. <clears throat> but at least we don't have to make those complications more complicated. <laughs> Simply learn to see it as what it is. Old habits that create the mind to function like this and function like that, that create the emotions to function like this, that function like that, that lead to actions that we may not even want to and still we are doing them and creating complicated situations in the, in the manifestation. <clears throat> when we see all that, it's not that we have to make it more complicated by complicated practices, by complicated actions, by complicated doings, trying to undo all that, just Find a way to bring the attention to the present, to be, to be conscious, to be consciously conscious here, now, and learn to relax. Learn to learn to relax in that. It's not difficult, but we somehow have to have that alertness. If it doesn't happen naturally, to remind us again and again to come back at least for a touch and even if then the attention goes again to bring the attention back again for a touch, for a moment relax in that moment and if it goes again, away again then we catch the attention again and bring it back playfully, joyously those little touches, they are very precious. They gradually build up more and more momentum until that momentum becomes stronger than the old ingrained habits that always forces to create problems in our life, in our experience. And when that momentum becomes stronger than the old habitual patterns, then the old conditionings that we have accumulated when growing up in this world, then it becomes simple and easy to just relax and be and let the experience unfold and let the life unfold, let the external situations unfold beautifully, joyously. And that joyousness of existence is not the result of external experiences, the result of some particular thing we have to do or not to do. It's simply an aspect of existence. And the more we are in touch with that, the more easy it is to accept. And as the time is passing and we are in touch with that, the intensity of it simply keeps on 
increasing all the time. I think we are stopping the satsang for today. I turn off the recording and then for those who like we can like other times turn <clears throat> on the camera people can see each other and say hello and goodbye to each other before we go so now i'm going to turn off the recording <clears throat>